we hope you have all your cloud computing on Rackspace, but we're realists. We know that you probably have uh, servers on Amazon or some other hosting company. Or now that we're, uh, the world has OpenStack, maybe you have OpenStack servers running on your own data center. Well, uh, Mist.io has a way to manage all of those servers across different providers, which is really helpful for all of you, and you should see it. Who are you? Hi, I'm Chris Psaltis. I'm a CEO and co-founder in Mist.io. And I'm an engineer, and uh, I have uh, studied uh, computer vision and machine learning. But I soon uh, moved to consulting and development, and now startups. Yeah. And it, so you're building a, a system to help manage cloud computing resources across m multiple platforms, exactly. right? Exactly. So right? How many platforms do you support right now? Right now, we support uh, Amazon, Rackspace, Linode, and uh, OpenStack support is about to roll out. We're in private beta right now, yeah. so when we go public uh, in early September, we will also be supporting uh, GoGrid and uh, cloud scaling. Yeah, and w the reason you need this is if you're going to build an architecture that goes across different platforms, you need to manage those servers from a common interface. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. So this is be becoming uh, more common uh, lately, uh, especially the, the hybrid approach. So companies have an in-house private installation of OpenStack, for example, but also some public ones uh, on Amazon or, or on Rackspace. And this makes sense because uh, if it's uh, public facing, then you should have it somewhere out there, closer to your users. Uh, but also it makes sense uh, in, case of, in the case of security, redundancy, failover, so yeah. Yes, and then cool. the other thing is soon all the geeks are gonna have these Google Glasses. Yeah. And we're going to be at, at a date or out, out watching out a movie a or bar. something. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to be, your system does all these really cool notifications. We're mm -hmm. going to get into what mm -hmm. it does. But I could control it right from glass eventually, right? Exactly. That's the idea. So you're, uh, we're targeting initially hackers and uh, founders and startups like ourselves, where people have many roles, they wear many hats, and they do all kinds of s different things. And uh, we'd like to enable them to manage their infrastructure better. Yeah. And uh, so we could be outside in a bar talking or uh, drinking, and uh, a notification will come, and I can take action right away and can fix the problem from wherever I am. So, it, so what does it do? What does it show me on the screen? So maybe, yeah, okay. Maybe let's uh, show it here. Let's see that. So basically, uh, you can uh, you have several backends. So here's our so backspace, uh, rack 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 space, yeah. So there are also several backends that are supported right now. And uh, if I add a new backend, I will get a list of all, all of my machines there. Yep. So you can see now that these are machines in several different places. And you can and see that it's running? It's there. running, so yeah. This machine. one is stopped. And uh, this green graph, it's uh, the load average yep. of the machine. So you can get uh, a bird's eye view on what's going on with your machines. And this is real time. It's so real time. If yeah. you got on, a, let's say CNBC talked about your server or something yeah. like that, and all of a sudden your spikes exactly, are exactly. Going we collect uh, data every five seconds, so it's almost real time. Okay. And uh, if can uh, can I start if, if a server yeah, is course. starting to get overloaded? Can I start a new server yeah. and add on? Here to is it? how you can provision a new machine. For example, I can do this one, yeah. and uh, I can select provider, one of those that I have already configured. I can select the operating system and uh, its size, let's do a small one, and uh, where in which uh, data center I want it to be, yep. and let's say it's key. And here I can put in a custom script. So I can uh, run a bus command when uh, the machine boots in order to you know install MongoDB or something like that. Yep. And uh, this will. Can, spin I, can I hook up Chef or other uh, kinds of yeah, recipes? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can uh, you can do Puppet and uh, Chef recipes, whatever you're using, basically. And uh, we'll try. We'll in the next phase we'll be working on that more, and we'll be expanding support to more platforms as well. 
Now, how do you guys get paid? I, how do I uh, pay you yeah. to do this management? What so do I have to pay for? Up until this point, we are uh, free and open source. So you can simply log in, create an account, or you can install it uh, in-house if you like. And uh, you can simply ma manage uh, your server. Now, if you go to monitoring, this is a service that we charge for. And uh, this depends on uh, how many machines you're monitoring. Right. So right now, I'm monitoring this one, and you can see the CPU, the load graphs, the network uh, uh, traffic and all that. And I can also set some kind of alert. So if the CPU usage goes over certain amount, yeah. then alert me or uh, and this is a common reboot the server or destroy the server, run a command. For example, restart Apache, the web server, or launch a new one. So, so you could set yeah. a rule uh, if your server's running out of disk space or running out of uh, processing space, you can automatically get more Erase uh, var te slash temp, for example, or something like that. And then it could also send a notification to your exactly, mobile phone? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And th this, this is, is over, over email right now, but uh, uh, it will be also a push notification uh, and an SMS option. Well, email automatically comes yeah, in my yeah. glasses oh, okay. notification <laughs> and uh, it works on all the cell phones. So that's yeah. if you send it to a Gmail address and mm -hmm. you have the Gmail app on your on your iPhone. And on uh, after you get uh, the notification, yeah. you can get cell access to the machine. So I can, yeah, right now I'm running some simple LS. So you'll see that I'll get the results here. So this way I can fix the problem right away from wherever I am. Wow. And you can do that on a mobile phone or on a yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Well, we support a it's a web app and it's uh, totally responsive. So it could run on your fridge, I mean, if it had uh, web access. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And this is all running in a web browser. This is yes, uh, yes, Google yes. Chrome on, mm -hmm. uh, is this iOS or this Android? It's uh, Android. Yep. Yeah. But it would work on an iPad or yeah, of course, a, of course, yeah, a mobile phone, yeah, iPhone. Yeah. It's Anything a nice with a 5 thing, yeah. 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 Very cool. Uh, how much do you uh, how much should a developer team uh, expect well, to pay for the... Well, we, we have not officially announced the pricing policy. We'll do that in uh, the next month when we launch uh, in September. Okay. But the price range will be very startup friendly. Okay. And you're aiming mostly at startups, but the enterprise is now coming into cloud in a, in a big way. And I think this is more attractive to enterprises because they have so many disparate systems mm -hmm. that they can't move. You know, so they might have a system running on Amazon, they might have a system running in their own data center, and they might have a system running on Rackspace yeah, Cloud exactly. or somewhere else. That's a long-term strategy. So we yeah. we plan to uh, get uh, the the developers and the, the the hackers love us, and then move on to the enterprise. Uh, now you. You didn't mention like Microsoft Azure or GoGrid or uh, uh, yeah. Giant or uh, by Google. By the September, we plan to, to support a couple of uh, providers uh, more. So we plan to support GoGrid and cloud scaling. Uh, and in the next uh, few months, we'll be steadily rolling out uh, support for m even more providers like the ones you mentioned. Okay, cool. Wow, that's really cool. It's pretty easy to pick up. It's easy to add to your. Do you have to add any code to uh, your no. existing cloud or anything like no, that? No, nothing. Uh, we to do the monitoring part. We install a monitoring agent on your machine, but it's completely open source. So you can simply get it from the repository of uh, your distro. Uh, now, one advantage of this kind of monitoring is can can you uh, put that monitor in different parts of the world so I can see what it what the server response time looks like to uh, India, for instance? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right now, we don't uh, support uh, some kind of external checks, but we're working with Rackspace right now in order to provide uh, such kind of uh, external checks and be able to do this latency and ping tests from wherever you are. And since, uh, since you're trying to take a lowest common denominator approach to all of the services, R Rackspace has its own monitoring tool. What, what do you miss? by u using your tool instead of the Rackspace monitoring tool? Or uh, monitoring. Right now, you miss the external, the, the external sex thing, the, the pings and uh, all these. But uh, after the integration, you can simply put in your uh, Rackspace account and you're ready to go with whatever you already have on Rackspace. Because we built it, that as exactly. an API. Exactly, so it's an API, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Um, is there anything else that developers should need to know about 
your uh, well uh, visit the website uh, subscribe and uh, we'll send an invitation uh, very soon i hope very cool yeah. and where do we learn more about it i guess it's uh, https uh, mist.io very cool yeah. thank you so much for coming thank out and showing this thank to you. me it's really helpful to what you to cloud developers so thank, thank you. you so much thank you Thank you.